Hey gamers, Maniac here with GameAccess.net saying something I'm happy to finally be able to say. It's PlayStation 4 day and I got myself here a brand new PlayStation 4. There were two reasons I waited this long to pick up a PlayStation 4. For those of you guys who saw my PlayStation Day introduction, you'll have a good idea why. Infamous Second Son was not out until later on. It is out now. And finally, the game system had HTCP encryption during gameplay. That's finally been removed. Infamous Second Son is out. Sony, here's my money. Thank you for the PS4. Today, we're going to be unboxing this beast. This is the 500 gig model. This is the only model that's available. Um, maybe in the future, if people in the future, a couple of years from now, are watching this, or maybe later, you know, one terabyte models and things like that. But for right now, this is a 500 gig model, the launch model. We're also going to be taking a look at the PlayStation camera, which is a uh, separate add on peripheral for the system. There's a lot I want to talk about with this particular peripheral, but we'll get to that when we start doing the unboxing. First things first, what do you say we take a look at the PlayStation 4 box, shall we? Now, the first thing that you'll notice is, is that it is a bit more white in the color scheme than I thought there was going to be. When you look at like the PlayStation camera peripheral, for example, and I'll even put it right in front of it so you guys can have it. This is right now what any PlayStation 4 peripheral box looks like. Whether you pick up a DualShock 4 or anything like that, it's going to be in this blue color. As well as the PlayStation 4 games are coming in cases that are of this blue color, basically. Um, I understand why they're going for this blue. Obviously, it's a Blu-ray analogy and things like that. But I kind of figured that if you're going to do a, a blue like this, then it should be blue all the way through this box. Uh, there's a bit more white on it, especially on the front cover than I would have liked to have seen. And even the blue that you see here doesn't really match too well, basically, on the color scheme. So that's immediate. The second thing you'll notice, this is a very slim box. This is a very, very slim box. I had a, I've got an Xbox One launch console box, and it is much, much wider. In fact, I may actually do a comparison video later on on the channel just to show you the differences in the sizes of the box between the launch model and the um, the not you know and this basically uh, quick comment though just so you know I know that the version of the Xbox One that I've unboxed is a black box but the non limited edition boxes did match with the peripherals so say what you will about uh, Microsoft their consoles do match a color scheme basically all right so let's put this aside for just a second I want to talk about the back just a little bit. Uh, first thing that you'll notice is all the PlayStation heroes for the beginning of the PlayStation 4 are on the back of this. Uh, we've got, let's see, uh, kill zone analogies. We've got, I don't remember who this guy is supposed to be. It might be uh, Elder Scrolls 5. This is Watch Dogs right here. That's, of course, Delson from uh, Infamous Second Son. I'll be talking more about Second Son later. Um, immediately, the game is starting to draw analyses. It wants you to sign up for the PlayStation Plus service, which is a requirement of the PlayStation 4 generation. You will need a PlayStation Plus account in order to play online. Um, and of course, PlayStation Vita right here, which is essentially a peripheral by this, by this console. It is now a peripheral. You can play your PlayStation 4 games with a PlayStation Vita off the screen. It's designed to do that now. Basic PlayStation 4 mark mentions right here. This is a little bit of an interesting thing here. It says it's a jet black console. As far as I know, these are the only model consoles that are out. But if it's referencing that this console is jet black, maybe they'll release a different color later on. They have done that before. Another thing you'll notice right here, what's included in the box, or as I like to call it, what's in the box? What's in the box? It comes with the console comes with a new DualShock 4 controller. Those are not backwards compatible with DualShock 3s. Um, although it is compatible with PlayStation Moves, it doesn't come with one. HDMI cord, power cord, USB cord, and I can't quite tell what that is right there. Um, a headset. A regular mono headset for online chatting. Also comes with the instruction booklets. So that's what we're going to find in the box. 
What do you say we cut this thing open and see what we got, shall we? I picked this up today at my local Best Buy. They had limited quantities. They have been having limited quantities of PS4 pretty much since launch. Uh, PlayStation 3 had a very similar, uh, I'm sorry, PlayStation 2 actually had a pretty similar. PlayStation 3 was on shelves almost immediately when it launched. But um, the PlayStation 2, when it came out, I believe it came out around November 2000, yeah, around November 2000 or so. You could not find a PlayStation 2 on any shelf in your consumer electronics store until probably around March or April of 2001, depending upon where you were. First thing I want to comment, and I'm sorry for constantly drawing comparisons between this and the Xbox One package, but it's pretty plain on the inside. Xbox One, even the Xbox 360 packages, had like logos and stuff to kind of get you excited about what you'd be unboxing. This is very plain. Um, it's, boxes are two-sided. I mean, I know printing costs money, but I honestly don't think it would have added that much to the extra component of the, of the packaging. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of a little disappointed that this is it. This is what you got. Uh, just a black background. As we can see here, we've got the console right here, which I will pull out in just a second. First thing I want to pull out, this is the DualShock 4 controller. This is a very revolutionary controller in many different respects, which I will talk about in just a second. Um, I know immediately that a lot of people out here did not like the design of the DualShock 2 or DualShock 3, basically, for several reasons. Um, if you look at this, majority of the problems that people have with it, they always said the same thing about the DualShock 2 and the DualShock 3. One is, is that the triggers were um, not concave, were, were, were basically always pointed downwards, basically sloped downwards, which meant that if their hands were sweaty, their fingers could slip off of the trigger buttons. Um, that never gave me a problem because there was a bit of texture on there that kept my fingers on the, on the buttons, no problem, I never slipped. But as you can see here, Sony did intentionally redesign these uh, triggers basically to curve outwards, which does make it a lot easier to rip them. Um, the Wii U as well as the Xbox controllers also have this similar design. Um, you'll also notice right here is this white pad right here. This is the light bar. It will glow various colors depending upon which program that you're playing and firmware version uh, 1.70 will allow you to adjust uh, what, ha what brightness basically that you'll have for this. Some people wish they had the opportunity to turn this off. You don't have that opportunity because basically the system uses this light bar as the way to calibrate how you're gesturing it. Um, it's similar to how the Wii can do that as well. Uh, in case you're curious, the Xbox One also does that. Uh, it has an IR transmitter built into the Xbox One controller, but it's invisible because it uses infrared light. You can't see it. But I know that a lot of people are complaining about this because it drains battery life, they said. Understandable. The big feature you'll notice about this is it does have an internal speaker. It has a PlayStation button. It's still got the multifunction buttons right here. It's still got two analog sticks. It's still got the D-pad. But you'll notice it's missing something very important. There's no start and select buttons here. And what is this thing right here? This is actually a two-tone touchpad, similar to the type of touchpad that you'd find on your smartphone screen. The other thing about this that you'll notice are two buttons marked Share and Options. These involve the social networking features of the console itself. Um, basically, start and select are dead. That's what the console developers are saying nowadays. So, moving on, I think it's a very nice controller. It also has a quick little thing I forgot. Uh, it also has USB 3. This is how it charges. This is the, how the connectivity works. It uses a USB 3.0 charger, which is, I'll probably find that cable very soon. Alright, going on. Welcome to the world of PlayStation. We've got these uh, manuals, these helpful manuals. I'll maybe show those later if people want, but they're just manuals. Okay, we're moving this section. Okay, I guess I'll have to do more than just remove this section of the box. I'll probably also have to take this box apart. Okay, that's fine. I see these Chinese puzzle boxes. We got these. Power cord, identical power cord to the PS3s. I see no difference whatsoever with it. Also, similar power cord to the PlayStation Move uh, charging stand. 
So it's an identical AC adapter. No power brick, by the way. The power brick must be built into the console. That's a nice feature. Uh, this right here, standard USB 3.0 cable. It's not very long, unfortunately. But what I just want to see, I'll, I'll, I'll extend it so you guys can see how long the thing is. It doesn't look very long, but it is bundled up. Okay, a little twist tie here. I just thought I'd maybe be able to slide it off, but okay. This does not look like it's six feet. I would say this is probably around. Maybe it is. No, it's about four feet. This is about, this is give or take. I would say this is about a four feet of USB three cable. Next thing that you'll see here. Oh, regular HDMI cable. This is plain old HDMI cable. The system does require that you use HDMI. There are no analog connections on the Xbox. I'm sorry, on the Xbox three. I'm sorry, on the Xbox One or the PlayStation Four. If you do not have an HDMI equipped HDTV, you cannot you can't hook your system up. There's no analog there's no analog output. Yeah, in fact, it does say so on the box. So make sure that you if you don't have an HDMI equipped TV, get one. This one is interesting right here. This is quite interesting. This is a uh, mono earpiece. I have seen some people on Twitch feeds use these. Um, it's got a little bit of a, a belt clip right here with a microphone um, and a uh, headphone input. I'm sure it's designed to fit into the headphone input on the bottom of the controller. Anybody who has an iPhone is probably familiar with these, but then again, the iPhone does have stereo. And to be perfectly honest, in this day and age, if you're going to release something like this that's this small, there is no reason really why to release a stereo. I know that a lot of people prefer mono headsets. I don't understand that. I've always dealt with stereo headsets. So it would have been nice to have a stereo headset. It would have looked better to have a stereo headset. Um, so there you go. But this is a headset. Let's get to the meat of the bones, basically. The meat and bones on, on why we're here. And we got to show the console. I did take a look at this console in advance. I have a cousin that actually has one of these, and I did get a chance to take a look at it. To be perfectly honest, I'm not quite flattered on the design of this console, to be perfectly honest. It's a little tough to, um, because of how it looks. Okay, that's beautiful. It looks beautiful, don't get me wrong. I mean, look at this thing. It looks absolutely freaking beautiful. But to be perfectly honest, there's a few problems with it that I immediately noticed when I started looking at it for the first time. Only two USB 3.0 connections on the front. Uh, that means you can only charge or use two front peripherals designed for USB. Uh, those people who might be looking forward to plugging in a, let's say, external USB drive or something like that, or any other type of external hard drive to offset the 500 gig hard drive, We'll probably need to plug the drive into the front panel. There's, there's no, as you can see here, there's no, there's no, uh, what do you call it? Uh, how do I put this? There's no USB in the back. There's only the front two. There are several connections in the back. There's an Ethernet connection right here. There is a HDMI connection for your television. There is a legacy surround sound optical connection for those of you who have uh, legacy surround sound uh, connectors. This is the power right here. That looks to be an IR port right there, but that could just be a sticker or something like that. Um, and this right here, you'll probably notice, is like, what the heck is this? This is the auxiliary port for the PlayStation camera. So there is, at the very least, a port dedicated for the PlayStation camera, which I think does kind of sort of redeem the fact that it only has two USB ports in the front. The other thing I want to notice uh, right here, it's kind of tough to see. Let's say what you will about the Xbox One and say what you will about the PlayStation 3, for example, which had the front-facing... Uh, disc trays that just allow discs in, like how a car would allow discs in. No tray spits out, you just slide the disc in and it pops out. Um, big comment I want to make on this, it's a little tough to see it, given the fact that it's receded. Um, I remember when I first tried looking at where the disc tray was on this thing, it took me forever to find where the stupid thing was. Um, it was very easy to spot where the, you know, where the uh, drive was on this. And like I said, there's only two, two USB 3's, but they're on the front. So they're easy to find. And that right there is the PlayStation 4 console. But let's be honest, that's not all you guys came here to see. You guys also wanted me to see this, the PlayStation camera, which is, as far as I'm concerned, 
the one required peripheral you should get, short of a second controller. I know some people are probably going to want to go out and buy a second controller. That's understandable. That, uh, that's, that's different. This right here is the PlayStation camera. It is a 3D camera. It has two different uh, lenses, which can do different resolutions at different frequencies. So you can get about, I think the maximum resolution that this camera can do at the lowest uh, re uh, refresh rate is uh, 1920 by 800. I'm just, no, I'm sorry, 1280 by 800 or something along those lines. Like 1200 by 800, so something like that basically. So it's not quite 720, it's a little bit higher than 720 camera, but it's certainly not a 1080p camera, which the Kinect actually is. The Kinect actually does have a, well, I'm sorry, the Kinect 2.0 actually is a 720, um, a 10, can do native 1080p. Um, it's mostly used at this point for games like the Playroom, although it will certainly be compatible when PlayStation Move games start getting released for the PS4. I know that there are a lot of players out there that uh, are interested in the PlayStation Move. Uh, this camera will be the new, basically, uh, the new iToy. It is $70 US. That is much more expensive than I was expecting it to be. It, as far as I'm concerned, it should have been about $60. Um, let's see what we got here. This right here for right now. I just want to, sorry, I kind of just, I didn't really give you guys a chance to look at the book, uh, the, the package that well, but. This is pretty much standard for what the uh, PlayStation peripherals look like. The DualShock 4 peripheral has a very similar box. Uh, this will only work on the PlayStation 4. This will not be compatible with the PlayStation 3. And as far as I know, PlayStation iToy is not compatible uh, with the PS4, but I could be wrong. This right here is the camera. It is much smaller than the Kinect. Much smaller than the Kinect. I have no idea how I'm going to get this thing out. Maybe it'll fall out. Okay, there we go. And this is it. As you can see here, microphone array, as well as two cameras with a serial number on top. I believe this is how it's going to look. It has a little Sony branding on the back. It's very sleek looking. It's it kind of reminds me like a cross between a Kinect and an Xbox. I'm sorry, a, a Wii sensor bar basically, because essentially that's what this is. This is a sensor bar. It's designed to read the light readings from the uh, DualShock 4's light bars, as well as uh, take your video and things like that. All in all. Both of these things put together will cost you, before taxes, $470. $400 even for the, um, for the PlayStation 4 model with all of the included peripherals with it, including the controller and the mono headset, and uh, $70 for the camera. If you want to get another DualShock 4 controller, that'll probably cost you anywhere from about 60 to 70 bucks. But be aware that they do all have internal batteries, so you don't have to buy a plane and charge kit for, for them. So there you have it, guys. That's my unboxing of the PlayStation 4. Until next time, guys, uh, stay tuned. There will be more unboxings coming. This is Maniac, over and out.